That wretch Goliath would murder us all. Mark my words. As if they were struck by a battering ram. I wonder how we managed not to hear any of this. What's happened? Destruction and trampled ground. Destruction and trampled ground. A strong pull broke this leash. Poke the elephant with this. Really, people are hopeless. of blood and saliva, simply as a result of impact. Sherlock, take a picture of the footprint. It's valuable evidence. This photograph can help us find the old article about the elephants. The front page was fascinating. It was hard to believe as a child. True. We may need it in our investigation. An amount of attention that most can only dream of. A royal suite for a favorite pet. Plenty of food to satisfy even the most fastidious. This is quite comfy. Old gas tank, enough to pump up an airship. A sailor's knife, useful for cutting wet and thick ropes. It's seen a lot of use, the blade is worn from grinding. Fresh signs of impact. A rough landing led to an altercation with this shed. <laughs> Oof, contortionist you were not.
Disjointed vertebrae. Difficult to say if it was a way to start or finish him off. A kneecap reduced to splinters. A belt from a dressing gown. Curious. Missing Pinky, middle-aged. It's none other than Theodore Gilder. Oh boy, Sherlock. Another death means another question. And we shall answer the question. It's far too interesting to give it up to the police. In a fit of rage, the elephant broke the chain and threw its victim on the ground with a fierce power. Escaping the scene, it pulled the body with it, but dropped it at the gate. At least some of this was witnessed by a third party who was hurled against the shed. The elephant can't have gone too far. I can still track it. Well, suppose you find it. Then what? Push it all the way back to the manor? Is this familiar? You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just annoying these people on purpose? May I ask for your assistance? Oh, sir, I'm afraid I don't know about that. Help me, please. I'll help you, sir. You have my full attention. Elephant barged into this cart of olive oil. What if we're lucky and he slipped and fell somewhere along the way?
Okay, hear me out. If an elephant falls in the forest and there's no one around to... John, no. Oh, you're such a killjoy. Strange. It was hung with care. The game has escaped us for now. We'll find a solution to the elephant problem later. Want to go for a swim? Who are you? My name is Sherlock Holmes. Theodore Gildon was... Did you kill him? Did you kill the elephant? It's not in the yard anymore. It escaped into the forest. You can't let it go. What if it returns? I highly doubt that, miss. Imogen Gildon. Please, I beg of you. Find that dreadful beast that killed my father. I suppose we do need to learn what happened.
Focus. Be clear and concise. What happened? Just the facts. I was here, packing my bags. My father was with the elephant. Then I heard the noise. Goliath made such a horrifying scream. Through my window, I saw how it lifted my father by his neck. So I ran downstairs. The elephant was dragging my father's lifeless body. I threw stones at the monster, so it dropped him. Then Goliath ran screaming, and I came back here and hid. Well, it was the most probable outcome, living with a giant wild animal such as that. How can you be so cold? Goliath murdered my father, Mr. Holmes. He mustn't be allowed to get away with it. Well, thank you for the information, Miss Gildon. I did have some questions for your father. Perhaps you might help me with them? I wasn't privy to much of my father's life. And it's very hard to think of anything at all with Goliath still loose. Please, Mr. Holmes. Very well. Do you mind if I ask you more questions if I find anything that might help? Anything to catch that monster. Miss Gildon, I was on this island ten years ago, and your father knew my mother. I believe I even had the opportunity to ride that balloon outside, but I do not recall seeing you. I lived at my late mother's in Sheffield at the time. I'm in no spirit to reminisce right now. The elephant is out there. You've never heard the name Violet Holmes before? Perhaps your father... Please, Mr. Holmes. With that beast roaming free, I can't think of anything. Very well. I have to leave you for now. All sidles, oh, sounds utterly dreary. She packed as much as she could carry. So idyllic. Enjoy your happily ever after before it stales. Ugh, the same dull poses on all romantic photographs. Hey, Sherry, we need to talk. You found false idols. We need to find the remaining two. What does bazooka even mean? Would this paper be good for anything but blowing one's nose on? They're not rubbish, Sherry. There's something more. I'm serious. Very well. I doubt it'll be worth it, but I will find them for you, John. You'll thank me later. They're some of the most imaginative books I've ever read. What did you say? Speaking aloud helps me think. The nicest spot in the room. Mr. Gildon spent hours of his life right here. Staring at an elephant's backside. What a wonderful life. Oh, the pungent stench of an animal. Did Theodore seek some pink elephants with this? I think Miss Gildon has barely matured. Relatively functional choice to replace the finger. I think they were closer than you and me, John. I'm hurt. Partnership annulled with a single stroke of a pen. What's so special about this place? Another elephant? A catchy title. I should take a photograph of the plans. I don't want to carry them around.
It's nice to see her young and smiling. Quite the spectrum. From the history of the Roman Empire to conspiracy theories of the French Revolution. From before Mycroft was born. Our family loves to prod at the past. Holmes's desire to rake up the past is hereditary. And, uh, which part of the elephant is in here? It's quite pungent. Oh, that. It's elephant sweat. Father believed that it might replace traditional amber grease. Well, that's true entrepreneur spirit. These bags of yours, it looks as if you've packed your entire room. Are you planning on going somewhere? My partner and I, we wanted a change. A fresh start abroad. But now I have to stay here. Here, an orphan. How can you read something like this? It's hard to swallow, and that's not due to the hard cover. You're hardly serious. Any library without Nave and Laura is incomplete. If you can read, then these books are an absolute must. Love and adventure. They're about life. Oh, I wasn't aware that exploding pyramids were part of daily life on Cordona. You haven't seen life, so you might try reading about it at least. I found this. Who's this young lad next to you, your faithful knight? Paul. He's my pirate. He's not really a pirate. I'll just call him that. It probably sounds very silly. Your secret is safe in my hands. Does Paul work somewhere? What is his surname? His name is Paul Perks. He and his yacht Whirlpool are the champions of the Salacia Yacht Club. He sails there. I'll show you where it is on the map if you need to meet him. A yachting champion? Oh, well, that will be a first. I prefer dry land, and so does my suit. I'm afraid I can't add anything useful. Had Goliath been aggressive before? It's dangerous, but it was never aggressive near my father. My father would do anything for Goliath. All the elephant had to do was clap its ears. You envied him, the elephant, I mean. Our house is called the House of Ivory. I've heard some people refer to me as the Ivory Girl. And my room stinks of the animal, as if it's me who lives in a pen and not Goliath. It's not envy, Mr. Holmes. It's just incredibly difficult to live like this. Did you observe anyone else in the yard? Any of your servants, perhaps? Servants? Do you imagine that we would have any with Goliath? No one wishes to work in this house, even for double pay. I didn't see anyone else. Only my father and that diabolical beast. Help me, please. That's a question I can answer.
champion's whirlpool pools bread and butter. A foghorn to navigate and warn others at sea. You should have a warning to cover your ears. Tales of hatred. I suppose there is something for everyone, including champions. Who knew archaeology could be so exciting? Exciting is certainly a word. Bandages. Has someone been hurt? Where would a champion hide a key? bandages. To earn big, you have to spend big. Mr. Gildon wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty. Additional earnings to sweeten the victory. An intro. Old betting slips. Paul always bets on Whirlpool. One victory after another. Undeniably psychotropes. Not a toothache, I think. A typical tea tin. I wonder what he has for biscuits. Oi! Hands off my possessions before you lose your fingers. Are you illiterate? The rules are written everywhere. Ah, Mr. Perks, the cabin boy himself. Champion, you mean. I was right. You are illiterate. I think a couple of shiners might teach you. One last chance. Who are you? I'm Sherlock Holmes, a friend of our mutual acquaintance, Miss Imogen. Look, you artichoke. Imogen has no friends. Except for me. If you must try to insult people, it's better to know the meanings of the words that you're using. You fancy you could teach a sailor to swear? Go ahead. Show me how inventive you are. Stand still for a moment.
So, a woman wishes to become a real criminal, and smuggling is a stepping stone towards that? Is there not enough prestige in yachting? Or is it easier to compete with other fools like yourself? Everyone has a starting pistol, just shoot and run. Don't say a word. I don't know where you're getting half of this nonsense, but you're on some thin ice here that I'm willing to crack. Damn you, Paul. I'm sick of... Who's this peacock? Does he know who I am? I definitely know who you are not. You're not a dictionary reader, at least. I wanted to see how you... pals interact with each other in your natural habitat. But I'm afraid I have to interfere. the party oh. I'll put you six feet under oh. Oh. don't cry you live Snuff's ready. Take this. Time to knock this guy out. Don't cry, you'll live. Give him the pepper snuff. It's all your... How do you do? Don't bother, Moo. The snuff's ready. I'm coming for you. I couldn't miss the party. I'm coming. The snuff's ready. You can overcome the brute. No more crime for you until next. Give him the pepper snuff. And there's no reward for risking our lives. Paul's explanation will suffice. Your fellow mariners have a strange way of showing hospitality. They were not my friends. Are you sure? I would rather risk my neck for someone who's at least honest and thankful. Perhaps, then, don't enter someone's life and be so judgmental, pretending you're better than they are. Then give me your perspective and allow me to see through your eyes. I tried to tell you before, but your partners interrupted. Have you heard the news? Theodore Gildon is dead. Do you have anything to say? Well, what a shock. To me, he was an angry old ogre. Good riddance. Was it Goliath that killed him? 
Did he crush him? Break his bones? Come on, tell me. I want all the details. You have an unusual way of showing grief. Imogen wouldn't appreciate that. But yes, the animal could have been involved. It's poetic in a way, isn't it? It takes a beast to kill a monster. I wish I could have been that elephant. What were you doing this morning, Miss Perks? Don't call me that. I'm a champion. I was sailing. The other club members told me that you missed the race this morning. Do champions not need to practice? Oh, you've talked with them already. No, I wasn't racing. I visited the doctor after that attack on me. And then I had to honor the deal with the bandits you just took care of. This business of yours, you should be more careful. Ruining your life at such a young age is ridiculous. I am careful. Except for you. No one has noticed where I store the smuggled goods. If the police arrive, there's no link to me. It's common storage, not exclusively mine. I'm clueless. I don't know what you're suggesting. It seems as though Theodore Gilden hung a sword of Damocles over your life and career. Were these only words, or something more serious? Pfft. Check my forearm. Pulled muscles and bruises. Small cuts. Nothing that you could call serious. I doubt that a man in his late fifties could wrestle you. It wasn't him. He behaved like a rat and hired brutes. His boys tried to lock my hands behind my back, but I was faster and I escaped. Was he so protective of his daughter, or was it your feminine secret that provoked him? My guess is that he was protecting his property. As he saw it, he owned Imogen, and he treated her like a piece of furniture. He didn't want his daughter to be loved by anyone. What's more painful is that Theodore didn't allow me to love his daughter. Typical. I'm not sure that your relationship with Imogen could be described as typical. Are you afraid of a woman in trousers? Now that's typical of men. You smuggle illicit psychotropes on your yacht. Not a delivery for the hospital, I'm sure. Of course not. I've had to cut corners to earn some money. How might a person afford to pay for a yacht in an honest way? I don't know, although I'm smart. The buyers are my customers. Adults who are willing to pay for their pleasure, or weapons for jewels. Whatever they want me to deliver. Nothing criminal. Well, it's your lucky day. I'm not here because of smuggling. Have you tasted this tea yourself? I wouldn't have been a champion if I had used it. It's just a side business that keeps my career afloat. It's quite expensive to compete in yachting. Sometimes I cut corners. Such as fixing Whirlpool yourself? Exactly. And sometimes I just have to pay. That's how I earn money. I don't sell slaves or take the last mangir from a poor family. Between yachts, darts, and notes from bandits, I've discovered many fascinating facts about you. But this, an installment of Nabe and Laura's adventures, why did you sully your library with this? It's a gift from Imogen. I didn't buy it. I might have turned a couple of pages, but nothing more. I swear. I will give you the benefit of the doubt, but your literary taste has put you on my blacklist. A charming picture. I've heard that champions do often pose with their trophies. Cheeky. It is a lovely trophy, though. I'm sure you will agree. What is it that you like most about her? Her naivety? Her father's money? A somewhat difficult choice. Especially now that her father is out of the equation. Does this knife seem familiar? I didn't find it in your competitor's back, to be clear. This knife is as blunt as your humor. It's a boson's knife, but it's not mine. I wouldn't be so careless as to mislay my tools. What can you tell me about the elephant? He's smarter than some people here, including his owner. Although I feel he could be dangerous, no matter how much he's fed. Why is that? Have you ever seen Goliath attack anyone? Well, not exactly. But I saw it, uh abusing some poor tree during one of its walks with Theodore. The expression on that old ninny's face was priceless, but it wasn't funny to look at. Believe me, it was frightening. 
Imogen doesn't strike me as an industrious young lady, so I find it strange that she was busy packing up all her belongings when Mr. Gildon died. That's some um, favorable wind in your sails, isn't it? Is it so suspicious that a couple might embark on a trip? I wanted to thank her, so we planned to go traveling. A Theodore-free place without elephants. The timing of it is suspicious, however. Your lady friend becomes an orphan and heir, and there's a planned trip directly afterwards. An improvised romantic dinner will never please a spoiled girl. A planned voyage might. It's not spur of the moment. Too ordinary a room for a champion. There's no incentive to put in any effort. <laughs> 